private sector cannot function. So we are really thankful to the engagement that we have with the Ministry of Power and all the stakeholders in the power sector as well as the Ministry of Finance in putting really the sector finance to a much more sustainable path. We are focusing on the reliability, making sure that uh, the power is given at the reliably and it is affordable. We are ensuring that the fiscal situation of the power sector is sustainable and we are also working on improving the sector governance. And we are also under the leadership of His Excellency the Vice President who are working on doing business and we are really good that last this year Nigeria was able to move uh, uh, more than 20 points uh, in the ranking and His Excellency has set a higher target that Nigeria should be below 100 and it is doable with all the effort that is the, with the people that are here to make sure that Nigeria is a Nigeria of the future. And we finally, we are also working with the state governments and through the Ministry of Finance uh, basically to provide a support to the states to improve their fiscal performance to make sure that they have adequate budget execution planning and to ensure that the states have a diversified source of revenues. So this is a multi-pronged approach with the engagement at the state level complemented with the federal level. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rashid. I do, I do know from, from our standpoint, we've seen massive progress during this administration in the effectiveness of the World Bank working with government at all levels. And you really feel like there's a lot, a lot of uh, momentum on these issues of not just fixing the pipe, but fixing the system that produces the pipe. So uh, we, to the extent we have time, I want to follow up with each of the, the panelists to go in more detail. But at this stage, I'd like to just pause and ask the Honorable Minister she has any thoughts based on what she's heard from the, the private sector here and the NGOs and also from the World Bank? Uh, thank you, Andrew. Um, I think, I mean, I like to come to these type of fora really to listen and, and to understand what the challenges of the private sector are. One of the innovations I think that this administration has, has introduced is um, the quarterly business forum, which His Excellency the Vice President chairs. Um, where we take a sector and we invite a cross-section of people and they come and we bring all the regulators in the room, the chairman of FIRS, customs, whoever, and we talk about the issues. Um, because many times we find in government is that you, you sit in government and you make a policy and you assume that the people on the field are actually doing it. And, and if you don't have that interface with the private sector to hear what's actually happening on the ground, you find the results are completely uh, different. So I think this government, we've tried very hard to be as, inter to be as interactive and as open as possible because you find that you, know, you, you don't know everything. You, you learn from the private sector. We learn what works, what doesn't work. What do you want, what don't. Sometimes we can't align. Sometimes we have to agree to disagree. And there are areas where government has to say, no, this is the policy and this is the direction. But very often, and, and, and it is a collaborative effort. And when you look at the size of the Nigerian economy and the size of our budget, it's clear, it's not just rhetoric. We can't do it alone. Um, I've given the example, for example, of roads and said, look, we would like the private sector to come into road provision. So on a Saturday morning, a whole group of us sat down uh, there, was, there were no protocols, and we went through, what would it take for you to come in? What will it take for you to invest in roads? We said, for example, we give them a 5% return. They said, absolutely not. There's a cost of funds. If you want us to deploy money to do roads that government should do, we can't be worse off as a result. So there's a constant interaction um, with government, and I mean, I've, I've listened to Tayo, I've made my notes, we, you know, it, 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 it's, it's a joint effort, and I think this government is very much committed to that, to that interface. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Minister. I think the, I, I've been told, of course, when the, when the uh, master's ceremonies come that we need to wrap up. We're a little behind, but I think that the Honorable Minister's comments really hit the situation very clearly. So, um, of the capital, so to, we need to grow a minimum of 5%. Uh, otherwise, we're effectively going backwards. Six or seven percent is better. 
Given the amount of capital that's required to grow 5, 6, 7 percent, the federal government capital spending is only 7 percent of that amount. 93 percent of the capital has to come from the private sector. So unless the government and the private sector are working together to make the environment conducive, it's not going to happen. But in the 10 years that I've been in Nigeria, the one thing that's changed is I think we now all understand it's not just about the government alone. I think we've had a, a fantastic insight for the panelists today. I'm sorry it had to get cut short, but it, we're all here today to talk, an individual conversation. So I'd like you to give a, a great round of applause for the Honourable Minister and our panelists here today. Thank you. I'd like to have a photo session with His Excellency. End of the first and session. I'd also like to invite panel discussion right, here in the Ogun State, Governor. live from Abiyokuta, where Ogun State has opened up itself to um, the whole world, I should say, if you have any concerns in business as regards industry, technology, and agriculture. They are making it possible for entities to come here and invest and thereby grow the state and grow the nation. Uh, you've just um, listened to um, the, the figures from the Honorable Minister of Finance, Mrs. Kemia Joshua, telling the story the way it is on how Nigeria has moved out of recession and it become a very veritable place and environment to invest in. Uh, you've heard the projections of those who do business even here in the Gun State and how much the state has um, created the enablers for business growth should, to, to happen. There are opportunities in housing, there are opportunities in infrastructure, there are opportunities in, in, in technology or opportunities in agriculture that are technology driven and technology based. And this is what Egun State is saying to um, the other industries and the other investors who are yet to take up on this opportunity. 47 industries came in after the first um, set of um, investment forum, the second one, the third one, the fourth one is happening under the watch of um, His Excellency Ibikula Musu, who is proudly, or who will probably proudly be buying out by the time the next economic forum opens up. We will also get to hear later in the day um, the Vice President talk to us on what the nation, uh, the direction the nation is taking after exiting recession, we'll be hearing other panelists in these two days of investment talk, investment opportunities. We have captains of industry here. We have investors from all walk of life who've seen some past commissioners, some past ministers present, we've seen industry moguls all coming to brainstorm to see what opportunities they can eke out as far as the good state is concerned. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, can we please give them a round of applause as they take their seats.